My name is Ralph and welcome back to Slay the Spire, where we're going to be playing the Guardian mod yet again. I think I actually might just start trying to ascend through these ascension levels. Probably not going to do all 20. But maybe. We shall see. Alright. Floor's the boss. Interesting. Blue candle, slimy hat, armored protocol, recover priming beam, bronze armor. Well, that doesn't really give me an idea as to what build I want to go for. Let's have a look at what our paths are available. Okay, so I'm seeing a pretty easy path for only one early elite, three rests, three elites, though. Might be able to snipe out one elite with the enemies in extra combat to have one HP, but I think I'll actually just go for the card removal. So I think uh, this one I'm probably just going to roll with the punches and see whatever we get offered and then work with that, uh, rather than doing it the other way around. Strike the frontline curl up. And that sets us up. Easy. I mean, priming beam right now? There's a shop in two spaces time if I want to go there. Yeah. Yup. Let's do it. We find the... Ooh, bag of preparation at the start of combat. Draw two additional cards. Neato Burrito. Very glad to see it. Super into it. All right, so let's actually upgrade the priming beams this combat. This combat, this run. It does... It, it, it's been a low priority every other time I've done a beam run. Ah. Oh. Refracted Beam had to turn up. I mean, we have so many upgrades this floor, though. All right, I'm going to skip that shop. We'll find a later one. It'll be okay. It will be okay. Just trust me. Every little thing's going to be all right. Don't worry. Don't worry about a thing in particular, actually. Yep, someone forgot how much energy they had. Now I'm not going to name names or point fingers, but it was me and it was all me and I'm sad about it. Next hand, I probably just go Priming Beam, Refracted Beam to the wake up. Neat. Come on, curl up. No curl up. So I'll prioritize defense in hands that don't have the Priming Beams. Come on, single Priming Beam here. Lame. Unfortunately, got a curl up here. Ow! Being curled up and having the negative 25% to damage and also having our strength lowered. I mean, life gets a rip... A little bit rough, but at the very least, we've got the kill. Uh, bronze scale started combat with three thorns. That's another priming beam, though. Yeah. I want all those priming beams upgraded. Okay, so refracted beam is currently 12. Upgrades it, upgrades for four. Upgrading all of these. You know what? I'm not even going to start upgrading the refracted beam until I have all of the priming beams upgraded. Because the priming beams, at the very least, hit one another as well. Let's necrotic and then just kill. Rather not take a bunch of damage here. Another toxin potion. Neat. And we get another priming beam. Okay, that's probably too many priming beams now. Uh, Quantum egg. Whenever a card is created during combat, it is upgraded. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Ooh. Okay. 
This could have been a lot worse. Let's go priming beam, priming beam, priming beam. These beams are mad primed is the thing that I've uh, just realized. 27 damage on that. Sure. Could set me up for a kill on each of them next turn. That is to say the front and the back liner. Would only say what? Mm -hmm. Needed to do that in the opposite order. I am still not used to the fact that you are weakened when you are in defensive mode. Still not used to it. Eventually I will be. But for the moment... Huh? Huh? What? What? Why does that... Huh? Uh, nope. Don't want any of those. Bottled lightning. Actually, let's make sure there's anything we want to put in a bottled lightning. There isn't. What? Put curl up in my opening hand? No, thank you. I want my opening hand to primarily just be priming beams. If I can get it. And now it is time to murder. Goodbye. And hello to the relic you provide me. Potion belt to pump up gain two potion slots. Neat. Uh, spheric shields. That can be really powerful. And the thing we found as a problem with this deck last time was we just didn't have enough defense. And I was talking about the fact that Spheric Shield in particular could actually be helpful for that if we have to take it. Yes, I know I'm about to go into a space with only eight. I'm going to use all of my potions to force my way through this combat. And I'm not going to wake up the enemy until I play the Spheric Shields. Trying to keep the enemy mad poisoned here. Come on. And it looks like it all works out in the end. Neat. All right, uh, Dorian, whenever you gain a debuff, gain temporary HP equal to the amount. At the start of your turn, reduce your turn-based debuffs to two. On pickup, increase your max HP by five. Lovely. Well, gaining defensive mode, what? Would I attach that to something? I think I still do. I think I just need to be in defensive mode the whole time. This deck needs defense, and look, if defensive mode is the way that I get it, defensive mode is the way I get it. With all of these pre-upgraded priming beams and that black potion to save us in the worst case scenarios, we should be okay here. Let's put time in the magic grove. Uh, we'll go for something unrelenting here. We should have the best time against the gremlin knob. Definitely need that refracted beam upgraded. Three slimed to our hand? Sure, we'll take that. We got Aura Calcum if you end your turn without block gain six block. Neat. If I defensive mode and then just play a couple cards after that, I'm going to actually end up in a pretty poor position. So what do I want? Priming beam to start with. No, let's black potion actually now. Hmm. Priming beam, a haul. Fortunately, we don't find exactly what we're going to want here.
Fine, I'll curl up. I wanted to avoid having to do that, but sadly that's not going to happen. All right, so we definitely have to anger the mushrooms here. Unfortunately, that mushroom will apply vulnerability to us, so we need the false gremlin to be dead this turn. It's okay. Orichalcum has our defense done. Let's heal the 10 here. Make ourselves a little bit more competitive. Take the frailty happily there. I mean, and then I get to refract for 60 damage. Sweet. Fable Spinner is going to have a lot of difficulty dealing any damage to me. Uh, we should go for the slimes because we're much better at single target damage right now. Than anything else. Sweet. Uh, exhaust all strikes, obtain five bites. Sure, they're generated during combat, so they'll be upgraded by the quantum egg as well. Which is going to make us so much more survivable here. All right. So we actually managed to get through this fight, despite the fact that I took the upgrade beforehand. I felt like taking the upgrade was the better choice. Definitely riskier. I'll say that much. Definitely the riskier choice. But I stand by it being better. Take the eight. Made sure to protect myself against it entirely. Go slimes, because we've still got the refracted in the deck, so we should be able to kill. Or not, that's fine. Just use the priming beams to do it. All right, so all of our priming beams are upgraded. So now we just upgrade refracted beam until we win the game. I don't think we even include any more cards in this deck at this point. Uh, well, Gatling Beam is a lot of damage, actually, with the with the Priming Beams that we already have in the deck, so we'll take it. Ooh, Backtick. Upon pickup, choose any non-boss, non-event relic to obtain. Well, what relic is ridiculous with this deck? Because I don't know if there is one that's better than just, like, an energy relic. Um, hmm. Oh, the ability to upgrade multiple times in a campfire. Yup, never mind. Okay, so. The best way for us to actually... Oh, wow. We've run out of space on this. The best way for us to accomplish that is actually probably pen case here. You may use two campfire options as long as neither chosen option is rest. Which itself is kind of just like a severe upgrade on... Where are you? They're from different mods, right? So they don't have to be directly comparable or interoperable. But uh, Arrowhead, you may upgrade two cards whenever you smith. Um, so the pen case is just a better version of that for us. Cryo Chamber, whenever a card has the stasis upgraded. Ooh, interesting. I don't know if that's useful, but it's definitely interesting. Um, like, obviously, Brimstone is ridiculous for us as well, but... I also kind of want basically anything that can provide us a lot of defense. Because we have a lot of difficulty defending here. No, it, it has to be the pen case. Let's go to the jungle. Uh, soon enough, we should probably start going back to the city. Okay, I can get... Three elites, three rests. Only two midline rests, though. Eh, it's not the awful. It's not the awful. It's not the awful is the thing about that, right? It's the okay. It's the somewhat reasonable. Mm. 
We are going to want an AoE beam. That's like the most obvious problem that we have at the moment. We just do so much single target damage. And very little of it in AoE. Buy mushroom, hello. Nope. I mean, we do have a shop in the next space. The problem is this Nega Watergraph saves us what? Like it, it means I have to expend a removal on removing the curse. Yeah, whatever. I have a bunch of money. We'll do it. Ooh, matchstick. Reckless during to combat to activate. Usable once per combat for two extra energy. That is huge. Mike, what is this? For X turns, your attacks deal 25% more damage. Refund one. That's a power? Upgrades to refund two. Intriguing. I still think we go matchstick. Well, actually, we definitely go, like, Snack Autograph first, right? Yeah. And it got us the cheapest one, unfortunately. Uh, so now we'll take Matchstick. I actually really want Sundial as well, because we have a relatively thin deck. So that would be amazing for us. It's just shame is so important to remove. We do shuffle our deck, like, a lot. No, I have to remove the shame. No choice in that one for me. Uh, do I take the Might here? Probably not. Polybeam is actually a really good way to get some AoE into this deck, so I'll take a single copy of Polybeam, and then I think I move onwards. All right? Anything else I can complete here? No, not really. All right, let's move. Remove all strikes, obtain three upgraded tackles. 13 damage to the enemy and 3 damage to ourselves. No, that's not how we deal our damage. We don't want the consult playbook, so let's completely pass. I've transformed now. And we can blow them up. Beautiful. Nope. Don't need another priming beam. We're okay. So we go priming refracted here. Not super into it, but... If it has to be done, it has to be done. Priming, priming, Polly. Actually managed to take out one of them. Neat. Wasn't expecting that, frankly. Thank you for healing me with this debuff. Hell, I even managed to get one of your chumps down. Polybeam. Alright, and then matchstick for the kill. Whew. Glad I remembered I had it. Fun fungus, if you have any leftover energy at the end of your turn, heal that much HP at the start of your next turn. Ooh, multi-beam. That's uh, some AoE for us as well. We don't necessarily need to have tick activated. It's just a bunch of damage and AoE for us. So we'll smith here. I think it's just refracted beam twice, right? We finally got this deck to work! Get that speed potion out. Uh, garlic at the start of each combat to play three language to all enemies. Neat, that's going to save us a bunch of HP. Fly Swatter, future card rewards screens will no longer be after the card that you have previously skipped. There's no more cards I really want for this deck, so I'll take the Sapphire Key. I think I am done with uh, including cards here. Ooh, we get to prime three times here. That is an 
huge opening turn. Yeah, 70 damage with that refracted beam. It's pretty good. Sure, I end up taking a significant amount back myself, but... Didn't we do good? Sweet. I even get to kill all of your chumps before you eat them and heal yourself back up. And tag bag. Shops have all three kinds of sale tags. Sale tags can appear on colorless cards and non-sale cards are cheaper. No need for any of those, though. I may want to just go for another shop on this side rather than another elite. So, in fact... Let us prime twice. And then singularly defend. Just trying to set up for the right turn. There's the refracted beam. So this will be 10 by 7, so I can actually kill the frontliner here. Not too keen on how much damage I take back myself, but... Ugh, look. If it had to happen, it had to happen. And it really looks like it did. Definitely don't want to take the amount of damage that it would take for me to kill the enemy on that turn. I have learned my lesson, apparently. That'll do, though. Mm -mm. Again, don't need to include anything that isn't necessarily going to be amazing. Sure, let's upgrade the refractive beam again. Uh, at the end of Elite Combats, raise your max HP by 5? Nah. You know what I mean. Uh, tiny Chest, upon pickup, gain 30 gold. Your temp is more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. I mean, that and a card removal I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Remove enough cards in order to get a little bit more as well. Do I go for more jerky? I don't think I need to. I think... Basically, most of the things that I would include in this deck at this point are just going to muddle the identity of it, kind of like unnecessarily badly. That's already two damage, uh, two energy for 40 damage. That is huge. But then I play a bunch of priming beams. And suddenly it goes from huge to ridiculous. Huh. 120 damage? I do want to perfect this boss if I can do that. Mm -hmm. Enemies not attacking this turn. Neat. I should be able to play these Toxin Spores because they're dealing self damage. So it shouldn't matter that I did that, frankly. But if I can flawless this boss, I get a rare relic. 14 four times. I think we actually just... Never mind. We're fine. Strike shield. Eighteen incoming. That's lethal. And should count as the perfect. It does not. Sorry, the flawless. Uh, it does not. Okay, so that's interesting. Because cards that you play, typically in this game's code, don't count towards preventing a flawless. Unless I took damage in, like, the first turn and forgot about it. Uh... Whenever a targeted enemy takes damage, gain one momentary strength. I mean, that's a really good way to still ramp up the refracted beam. In elite fights, at least. Compile package. Choose one of three packages out to your hand. We've had that before. We've had that super recently as well. Um, spot weakness could be useful here, but I don't know if it's more useful than just playing another priming beam. Okay. Ah, of course. Prosthetics. Prosthetic spot weakness would have been incredible. Well... 
Uh, I'll take the Terracotta Horse. Just gain energy at the start of each few turns and raise your Ascension level by five. So now we also have to deal with Elites being deadlier, bosses are deadlier, heal less after boss battles, start each run damaging normal, normal enemies are tougher. Uh, I'm fine with that, though. All right. We can get the Emerald Elite here at the very start. In fact, we just should. Try not to take too much damage this turn if I can avoid it. But I do need to play all the priming beams just for the sake of multi-beam. There it is. Uh, so that is now 9. 9 by 5 is 45. 45 damage AoE. That's not enough to kill. Uh, I'll use a steroid potion and then play it. It's really important that I save as much HP as possible there. Pre-upgraded polybeam. Sure. Mm-hmm. So here's exactly the situation that I've been talking about before where we're going to have difficulty against enemies with thorns. This is why I've included more defensive cards in my deck. Like literally this combat in particular. The problem is if I don't play all of these priming beams, I end up just losing the fight. I could actually heal up in this combat, like, ridiculously. Okay, so I'm now one hit from killing the... Ah, uh, damn it. I have to kill them this turn. Damn. Uh, we could have used the Fun Fungus to heal up a lot there if we just happened to get the right things for it. Quartz. Well, I can take the Quartz and just socket it in the Polybeam eventually. Momentary Strength is actually interesting in that Momentary Strength does give us a debuff. The debuff counts against Durian, so there's something intriguing in doing that. But even more intriguing than doing that, in my mind, uh, is just having the draw. Draw is really, really powerful. One down, two down. You are kidding me. Yep, should have defended that turn. Ow. <sighs> pre upgraded priming beam. I mean, if it's pre upgraded. Weightless crab for each three curses you draw, gain one intangible. That's not going to happen to us. Papillion heart, lose four max HP. The problem is, if we can't target. Like, with intention, we will just die to massive shapes because it'll have thorns. So, I can't take that, even though I would want it in this position. I really want to play Spheric Shield, but getting Gatling Beam out seems really important to me. Oh. I keep forgetting that I have Matchstick. That's so awful of me. Need to remember that I have that. All of these get upgraded at the very least. Thank you, Quantum Egg. Bunch of beams in there. One strength, one artifact. That's a random attack. Uh, 21 damage to a random enemy for each gem in those cards. Uh, well, we only have one, so I think we'll avoid that, actually. Alright, let's reroute the priming beam. Neat. Just trying to make sure that that priming beam comes back to our hands, that we can play it again, get some ridiculous value out of it. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, let's ruby priming beam. Should be invent, right? First. Mm hmm. If I did the vent first, I might have killed the enemy on their first attack against me there. Entirely my bad. Ringing Soul. Once per room, whenever you add a card to your deck, gain 3 max HP. It's very difficult to make us do that. Okay, we can 
socket and then smith the refracted beam twice here. Ooh. Whenever you enter a shop, heal 15 HP. Neat. There's a shop in two spaces time, so I'm just buying 15 HP here. Uh, lose one focus innate or non-attack damage you increase, uh, deal is increased by two. Eh, not common for us. Um. So I could sell back tick, I could sell Sneko, I could sell potion belt, I could sell, uh, probably tag bag by this point, tiny crab, weightless crab, ring soul. Okay, yeah, we actually have a bunch of stuff that we can sell, so. Damn. More than happy to take that option. Now I get another card removal, get another strike out of the deck. Just use a brace of normal enemy encounters and no longer encounter in question mark rooms. Yeah, I don't know about that one. We'll take the master of strategy there, I feel. Tiny police box. Gain two stasis slots. Neat. Yes, I know what that's a reference to. Don't worry. Um, two armored protocol. Not super into it. I think a strength potion that's actually huge. We've got a bunch of healing out of that. Do I want to go for another elite? A nightmare in particular? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us to get the upper hand in this combat. Got to play a bunch of these priming beams. Enemy has that strength is the problem. <clears throat> Shouldn't be too far from just being able to instantaneously kill the enemy, though. Yeah. Had, happens this turn, right? Priming. Priming. Heavy jacket. At the start of each combat, gain one plated armor at each two relics that you have. Neat. Not bad. Uh, none of those really make their way in here. I really want to smith the refracted beam twice here. But I recognize there are elites that I will not be able to kill at this point. Right, depends on how early we... Never mind, we drew our AoE early. Uh, so if I play two priming beams, this goes up to nine damage. Nine damage by three. That's enough. Okay, we're good. Just needed to make sure that it was going to kill both of the companions there. Okay, it's important we play Priming Beam twice to kill the backliner. Yowzers. <clears throat> I'll take my gremlin food whenever you rest. Uh, upgrade a random card. Mm, I'd like to rest, but I don't know if I get the opportunity to. Priming, priming, refracted. A hell of a lot of damage right there. I'm glad that we have the ability to suddenly give ourselves five artifact in the final combat, but I'm very much hoping that we can keep that for the heart instead. Should we ultimately decide to go for the heart, which... I mean, I think we probably should. I need to remember about that matchstick. I can't believe that I keep forgetting it as often as I am right now. It's 
Sweet. I think I got him. I have to recall, right? Otherwise, I don't get to go to the heart. So it's got to be recall and then smith. What? Pen case. You may use two campfire options as long as neither chosen option is rest. As soon as I recalled, it was like, okay, you're done, I guess. Uh, so pen case has a little bit of a bug there. I think I've encountered that before with different things. But if I smith first, I should be okay. Let's get the third turn on spheric shield. That actually seems like it's probably going to be more impactful. And then I can recall, yeah. So the enemy has, for the next two turns, when attacked, it will deal three damage back. So not when attacked, it'll deal three damage back. It's when it takes, un uh, it's when it takes attack damage, it'll deal three damage back. I wanted to know that. Unfortunately, the enemy also is blocking their own intent, so I only just realized that they're attacking that turn. Have a look up at the top. Oh, okay, the shape spawned in differently this time, so I can actually see the attack. But if you go back like a half minute, you'll see that one of those was blocking the enemy's intent, so I didn't know they were going to be attacking this turn. Um, I definitely still want to start with curl up, is the thing, and priming beam. But now that I know that Polybeam actually, it's not when attacked, but it's when it's dealt damage. Because when attacked is, if I'm not wrong, the same wording of the Thorn's power that the... Uh, the same wording of the Thorn's power that the Guardian has. Not the Guardian is in me, but the Guardian is in the, the first law boss, the Guardian. And the problem there is that it only triggers once per plate attack, no matter how many times that attack hits. So there's a clear differential here. Between the way that this functions and the way that uh, mechanically from previous experience with the game, I would expect it to function. Definitely priming, priming, multi-beam this turn. Ah, you have thorns. Great. I have to deal with that. 13. 13 by 3 is four, uh, 39. Add another one in and you get to 52. Still not enough kills the spiker this turn. Start with the adrenaline potion, I think. So 12 by 12, 144 damage that we can do to the back line. Strength potion and then multi beam. This isn't even going to kill the spiker, but it'll get close. Oh no, it does. Never mind. We're fine. Right. 40 incoming damage. It's a lot. Hmm. Did not manage to actually kill the exploder. I was so, uh, effectively trying to kill there. That's okay though. Managed to keep myself relatively safe. The enemy has mm, a lot of temporary thorns. I actually can't attack there. It's only for that turn, though. The problem with Gatling Beam is Gatling Beam does hit enemies' thorns. So. And incurs the damage back. So I can't play it without possibly murdering myself. And. Not a fan. Refracted Beam is unfortunately in the wrong hand here. Really bad idea to use it. Alright. Well, at least you don't have Thorns up this turn. This so I can be a little bit more aggressive. I just took a lot of damage there, unfortunately. Uh, let's curl up. A little priming beam. And then poly attack. We want to kill the summons. We don't really manage to do that. That's okay, though. And he takes a bunch of damage for trying to hit me. So, enemy in the back line now has... What? We've already taken damage this combat, so we don't need to care about perfect... So the enemy in the back line has 197 HP. 
and this is 288 damage. So we're fine to kill them, but how many hits until 197 is concluded, right? Because if it's more than six, and it, it will be more than six, right? Yeah, it'll be more than six. So the refracted beam is actually a really bad idea to hit. It just kills me against the enemy. This deals damage to me, but it does actually manage to clear a minion as well as deal some damage to the massive shapes. Okay, Polybeam is still huge. So 30 damage 12 times. So 30 it will only take, what, five hits to kill this? Yeah, we're fine. Neat. Whew. And we got to save the right potions that we want for the heart fight. Eh, 19, sorry, 19. 19? 11, 28. 19. Wow. Uh, all right. Let's drop the double upgrade here. The refractive beam is already going to get really close to dealing way too much damage per turn to the boss at the end of the run. Thank you for the heal. Uh, Elixir. We'll use that on turn two. Taking the quartz is just going to trigger one damage against me from the beat of death. Matchstick so that I can spheric and then priming, 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 multi-beam. It's unfortunate that we got multi-beam that early. It was actually really, really, really important we get it later, but that's okay. It'll happen. Thankfully, we heal... Oh, no, we don't have Pantograph anymore. Why did I... I was certain we had Pantograph. So I was thinking, oh, that's fine. We'll heal as we go into the boss fight anyways. I don't really care about this too, uh, this too much. Easiest murder of all time. Yeah, we got this. Goodbye, Spire Spear. Hello, Tiger Marble. At the start of each combat, add a random card to your, uh, which exhausts to your hand. It costs zero until played. A uh, temporal potion to accelerate all cards in stasis, as well as a bunch of cards I don't want. All right. We could bronze at the very start, obviously. We'll also ancient artifact before we speed potion. Get ourselves five decks here. It's really important I play as many priming beams as early as I possibly can. So I'm actually considering, like, do I curl up or anything? No, I think I just willingly take some damage here. So priming beam, and then violence gives us... Wow, it only gave us one priming beam. That's super, super lame. We'll priming beam again. Still a lot of damage on the refracted beam. Every time that hits, the temporal potion is actually blinking. Weird, that. About 150 damage that turn. Could be a lot worse. Drink this as quickly as I possibly can. Neat. So that'll burn all of those out before I even draw my new hand. It's definitely a little bit tricky, I'll say that much. That is a little bit suspect of a, of a way to get that effect, but works out in the end. All right. That Gatling Beam set up. Enemy takes a ridiculous amount of damage to our thorns. Come on, just prime him up. Nice. So I just... I want to play the Spheric Shield this turn, but 
The fracted beam is too important. It's too much of our damage to negate. To neglect, rather, sorry. Let's draw first. Incoming damage is 60. We'll defend twice and do two priming beams. Multi-beam as well. Your multi-attack situation here has been awful for you, let me say. And now we're set up for just the easiest hard kill. Hell yeah. And that didn't even significantly use thorns. It only incidentally used thorns, right? Three from being in defensive mode, three from having the bronze scales relic, and three from just having a potion that we had for the right time. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. That has been The Guardian. Not like we're done with The Guardian, but that's been The Guardian. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my contents on the game, past, present, and future, as well as a link to the Steam store page where you can pick up the workshop collection with all of the mods played in this series, past, present, and future. Uh, there's also a link in the description down below to the game that is available on Steam. Sumo, made by the creator of both Slimebound and The Guardian that we are currently playing. Link down there in the description for your viewing pleasure. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.